what key life experiences have formed who you are today? I would say uh, being the first in my family to go to college and get a master's degree and then decide to move across the country to Arizona and without really having any background or history here and kind of starting from scratch. How did you become passionate and involved in architecture? When I was really young, I used to just sit around with tablets and I would draw floor plans of houses and like uh, the elevations of houses and someone said you should be an architect when you grow up and I didn't know what it meant at the time and then I just kept going with it. Um, I took a couple classes in high school and went to college for it. What are your core values and how are they reflected in your practice? Uh, I think the, the core value should always be about the client and I think you should always be very humbled and very eager to listen and to learn and not kind not go down the road of having an ego that you're an architect and, and you do this for a specific reason, but I think it's all about the relationships that you build with clients. What is your design process? When we, when we meet with a client, we usually go through visioning processes where we kind of have mood boards or different types of goals and wish list items that the client desires to kind of see at the end of a project. And so we kind of start with several different uh, visioning practices that we go through, but it's kind of all about figuring out that, that end goal and kind of how do, we, how do we start doing that. And a lot of our projects are, we have various stakeholders, sometimes large stakeholder groups, and these are large public scale projects. So um, there's multiple entities usually involved. Um, how do you collaborate with others to realize your impactful work? I think a lot of that comes like we work directly with a lot of consultants which are mechanical, electrical, plumbing engineers, structural, civil, landscape, and so we kind of work with them hand in hand through workshops throughout different phases of the project where we have usually standing weekly meetings with them to kind of coordinate drawing progress sets. Um, they'll be included, usually the workshops are kind of an in-person kickoff to the project um, and there's a lot of back and forth. How has Peters and Thor's architectural ideas and buildings impacted your architectural practice? I think how, you know, how we kind of talked about like light and internal atmosphere, kind of how that feels. I always like to envision what kind of roles or what you might be doing in that space at a certain time of the day. And if you think about, you know, early mornings where you catch the sunrise and the, the warmth in that space is, is different than like sunset where it's kind of golden hour where you might have, you know, you're kind of winding down or it's that space of like comfort. But a lot of times our, you know, our places are kind of public. So where would it, where would it most be effective to kind of capture those lighting? Is it more kind of a, a soft seating lounge area? Is it just workspaces where you think about kind of that eight to five window of time? You really design a lot with light just based on ambient color temperature, natural light, always striving to have views to the outside or have that kind of nature incorporation. In. I feel like when you start a new project, especially where I kind of am in my career, there's always so many unknowns or it might be a totally different typology than what I maybe worked on in the past. And so um, I wouldn't say that it's a challenge, but it's always a learning curve. It's always, you're not going into this where you kind of have the mentality of, you know, oh, it's easy, I've done this before, I know how it is, because every project is different, every project has its own curveballs, so it's more just, it's kind of being humble and being a sponge, like you always need to soak it up and, and be humble when you, you know, if you make a mistake. What advice would you give to a young student? I would say to keep the, keep the momentum and keep the desire. There's times where I feel like you can easily kind of get beaten down or you'll get in, in situations where you just feel like you don't know anything or that maybe you think you should know more than what you do and I think it just comes down to everyone kind of navigates it a little bit differently but you just don't give up don't never get discouraged um, hopefully you're fortunate to work in a place where everyone is very easy to go and talk to 